quick. <laughs> the sound of the cupcake. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. We're making a video. I'm Kelsey Hoff. I'm just doing a vlog thing. I don't know what I'm doing, but today, I have a super special guest and the sun. Oh, at least not. <laughs> Nice rolling. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. We were like, how are we going to plan this? How are we going to plan this? We're just going to do it. You just, you shoved yourself all just the way down. The <laughs> it was amazing. So here's Elise, everyone. Hi. Oh, she's working yeah, it. Yeah. So Elise Nyland, she is a comedian here in Chicago, stand-up comedy. You are. You're making that face like, mm, debatable. <laughs> <It's> debatable. <laughs> you know. So uh, you do a lot of shows here in Chicago, but you also run your own open mic called You Joke Like a Gor Girl. Mm -hmm. I'm really good <laughs> at speaking. Goyle. You joke like a goyle. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> um, at Volumes Book Cafe. I always want to call it Volumes Bookstore Cafe. Too That's many, wrong. Too many things. Too many things. So, can you tell the great people here on the internet, oh, uh, why you, ooh, gross, why you started? Uh, why did you start that open mic? <sighs> Question one. <laughs> well, it was a new bookstore in the area. I, I live in Wicker Park, and it was like a new bookstore there, and... I was like, oh, there's not really many open mics down in here in the Wicker Park area. So I just walked in. It was a women's, oh, they, uh, two women own it. They're sisters. Perf. Thumbs up. Thumbs all the way. All the way. All, all the way, way up. up. All the way up, <laughs> those sisters. <laughs> what? Thumbs are I'm all so way sorry. Up. <laughs> that was the worst. Oh, I hate myself. Uh, so you walked in, you threw your thumbs up. <laughs> I was like, take these thumbs. <laughs> Put them all the way up. <laughs> So they were very like, yeah, do yeah, it. They were super um, encouraging. Well, at first they, they were like, uh, actually, we just had someone come in and um, they're already going to do one. And I was like, but what if it was all women? Oh, and they were like, they were like oh, thumbs all the way up. <laughs> there was a lot of insertions of thumbs is how I assume this interaction. We were all just like. <laughs> <laughs> nice dance moves. Pretty amazing. Thanks. Pretty amazing. Um, so they were like, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, and then they gave me one day a month. And yeah. And they didn't really have any rules for it. At the, at the time that I asked them, I didn't even have a name for it. Um, which, we'll talk about that later. I okay. Know. Talk about it now. I don't know how I feel about the name. Oh, no. You don't like a girl. You don't like it. I don't know. Oh, controversial. Oh, uh, you guys. Breaking news. <laughs> I, I have a hard time naming things myself. Oh. Yeah. But go ahead. Tell, tell the story. Uh, no, there's not really much of a story. It's just that hmm, I'm all about the all women's thing. I really, really am. But I'm, as a queer person, I, I also, it's it's hard for me to think that like a trans man wouldn't mm. have a space, like a safe space where they felt like they could go that was like more queer positive. Yeah. We had a, a situation with the Kates as well where it's like we're trying to be like female identified. Yeah. But I don't know, yeah, yeah, you're right, like, how to be that inclusive, but then also be, like, empowering with women. It's tricky. It's I think it's tricky. tricky. Yeah, I hear yeah. that. We're figuring it out, internet. We're figuring it out. Gross. So you're going to keep the name until you find... Until I figure out language. language. <laughs> <laughs> language. But, but, but it went really, I mean, the first one... Uh, oh, sorry, you guys, I knocked you around. Um, but the first one went really well, and it's continuing, it's doing very, very well. I'm, like, oh, like exceptionally well. Thanks. Um, and I, people have, like, there was the Northwestern group that came in to, to film it, and she kind of asked me all these questions, like, how did you create this environment? And, secret, I didn't. <laughs> like, I, I'm hush, just, hush. <laughs> for real though, it, and I wish I had an answer for that. It's kind of like your stuff. Like, you kind of always just have, it's just the person that you are, it's like you're just like a wel welcoming person, and eh, she hates compliments, I think. Um, I do. <laughs> Be uh, mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> also, get closer. I know I stink because I just came back from the gym, but deal with it. <laughs> so um, you don't—you're not taking like ownership of creating the space for some reason. You're just saying I, I built, I, I, I opened the door and people came. Yes, that's what you're saying. But it, like, what I'm but saying, you have—I mean, you are also curating the show. So Elise is the host. She books it. There's a showcase, and uh, clearly, the people who are coming in as the, as the all female, all female identified. Um, open mic, they keep coming back. Like, that's yeah. the other thing. Like, you have a series of big-time regulars, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, and the, the nice thing, and we were talking about this, the nice thing is that... Where do we look? Where do we look? <laughs> At least um, like, can I just not look at myself this whole time? <laughs> Wait, what did I just say? I just said I hate not looking at myself. <laughs> what a deal. Uh, <laughs> deal? Yeah, you're a deal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know the whole of the D. <laughs> that's um, what a deal looks like. 
All right, we got to focus. Yeah, we do. We got to um, focus up. So when you had this interview with the Northwestern students when they went and, and shot the, the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is that uh, most people that come to the open mic, like, they, they stay, which is weird, I think, for an open mic, because my experience is with that is, like, people are waiting around. They're, like, in their own little world, in their own little notebooks, and they're, like, waiting for the name to be called. They go do their four minutes, and they head out. And they bail, yeah. And, I mean, we do have some people that do that. I see you. <laughs> No judgments. No judgments. Lots of uh, judgments. <laughs> so much judgments. But it is unique in that way where it feels like some, uh, an open mic, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like a free-for-all, Wild West. Anybody can show up and sign their name on the list. Mm -hmm. And most times comics are in and out real fast. But your open mic and a very, very few around the city where people are really invested in, in like watching and being a part of it. And I think it's it's kind of like the same as when, because you run your show at the bookstore, it's there's lights on and you can see people's faces. And you can see not, when they leave. Yeah. yeah. And so there's like a little bit of self guilt I think like oh they're gonna see yeah me they're gonna see me I better stay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so yeah it's it's good in that way it, I feel people all the women they we talk about periods I mean the time that you were there you're like this is amazing someone passed around a, a, a water bottle uh, like a remember that oh yeah somebody there was um uh, the the heat what is it? I wanted to call it a heat rocket that's for <laughs> sure not right <laughs> but like um hot water bottle hot water bottle because you're like oh I'm cramping up and yeah. You were, like, holding it off. It, <laughs> it was this weird menstruation church. Yeah. It was great, though. <laughs> but I feel like people, in, in, in this, like, really lighthearted way, you know, you hear things of, like, this is an all-gender thing, and people are like, oh, <laughs> and they get, like, afraid of that, but it's so, like, uplifting yeah. and, like, fun. It's not, like, negative or just, like, when well, you talk about know. this. You talk, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, when, when you say that it's an all-women's thing, it's like you think that you hate men, but you don't hate no, men. It's no, no, like, no, no. You just want to create a space that's a little different, like a, a, a nook, an anchor, a nest, because, uh, you know, there's not a lot of us out in, mm -hmm. in the world, and yeah. so, like, there's a community. It's just, like, community-based, and there's also a space for, like, a bunch of allies, like, maybe not yeah. necessarily on stage, but people are always surprised when they come to the bookseller shows that there are, like, men in the audience. I know. So Everyone's always so like, gasp horror, <laughs> shock. <laughs> well, I've even gotten people, like, that message me on Facebook with the, through the event and they're like are men allowed in the audience and I'm like of course yeah, yeah, like, yeah. please come listen to women sure. speak yeah and it'll be good for you <laughs> yeah yeah um, so you did it really for the space obviously to sort of celebrate women but also that it was close to your neighborhood yeah well, um, I was also very inspired by you because oh, barf <laughs> barf 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 <laughs> no um, compliments <laughs> Also, at least brought snacks. I mean, what a brown nose. <laughs> and I love it. Um, she also, you, oh, my favorite video. If you're going to watch any of Kelsey's videos, aside from this one, it has to be the one where it's like a minute and 56 seconds long. She wakes up really reeling. Oh, um, man. Some candy. I got some candy addiction. I think it was like the last addiction. I'm going to be talking my mouthful. It's going to drool all the You're like, I love egg-shaped anything. I'm going to put that egg-shaped put that in my mouth. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So oh. Elise. Yes. Why did you even start doing comedy in the dang first place? Because you were a person with a very professional career and like a, a, a science track. Can I say yeah, that? Sure. She's a lady scientist and lady comedian. She's a whole package, America! <laughs> Every time you say that opening, I'm like, I'm busting all of those stereotypes. <laughs> She's like, math and science, you're next! And I'm like, that's me, I'm here! Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what... Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. What, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what made you decide to, like, dabble? Um, bored. Bored. I was bored at first. And then I was like, oh, Second City, cool. I'll, I'll do that for a little bit. I did mm -hmm. the whole A3 program. Oh, yeah. Um, didn't go any further than that. And then... Well, and, and like I said, I, I feel like I transitioned or wanted to transition from doing improv to stand-up because in improv, I feel like people can make, people kind of assign you who you are a lot of the time. So oh, interesting. Yeah. And I wasn't having any of that. Yeah. So I was like, I want to be my own person. So I, like, and when you're doing stand-up, you, there's no one else you can be. Gotcha. <laughs> so that's why I did it. Um, and then I saw... Feminine comic stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. And my that's the class that you took. Yes. Yeah. And my roommates were like, "You should totally do it. You should totally do it." And then I was like, "I can't." <laughs> like, no, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> you became a real sudden, a sudden lady. 
Where's my hanky? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then they bought it for me for my birthday. Oh, gosh. Um, and so I was, like, forced to hang out with her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, jerks. Um, so you took the yeah. class, so you kind of wanted to switch from improv. Just you were curious about stand-up. And I didn't, it, I feel like I was like, how do you even do stand-up? Like, yeah. How does a person start doing that? Yeah. And I, I feel like you're so approachable in your way of it's my cheeks isn't it yeah. it's just those <laughs> it's just those it's like we better talk to her look at those cheeks <laughs> she can't like, harm anyone <laughs> I came home there like what's her name and I was like I don't know but she's fantastic she <laughs> her name is Cheeks Magoo I think <laughs> So it's just like you came to get some like information. Like you weren't quite sure how to like bust into that world. Yeah. You're you were a little like maybe nervous about it. Your friends, your roommates were like, get in there, a-hole. Yeah. And then once you found it, were you instantly like, this is what I want to do, or were you still on the fence? No, I loved it. You loved it? I loved it. Uh, Got her right away. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it was the approachableness of how how you laid it out. Just like it, it wasn't like you sh- like everything you write like you don't have to perform everything you write and I know we just talked about that too but writing is scary you guys yeah well yeah we were talking off camera but like the writing if you're saying the, the writing can be challenging for you right I yeah, mean do you I mean, mind sharing because I think especially if people are like how do I do it what do I do blah 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 it's kind of interesting to know like what your challenges are my challenge is that I feel like every time that I go out to sit down to write anything that it is set in stone it is the truth and <laughs> it will state the truth and everyone's gonna know that I wrote that down <laughs> Uh, and that's I know, real heavy. It is. It, it's why, like, every time I'm like, I like quiver with my pen. And I'm like, but it's the truth. It's like the Ten Commandments. You're yes. like, da, 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 da. You're like, this fart joke's forever. <laughs> <laughs> this fart shall now be forever stoned in Fart Town. <laughs> oh no. But, but, why do you think that is? Like, why is there so much gravity to that writing? Why do you put. Oh. Well, well, I mean, I don't even know if you know what that is. I don't know. But what. Because everybody has different challenges. And the fact that yours is like, this is a permanent thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you even get over it? Because I've seen you write new stuff. I mean, you're I doing know. new material. So it's like, you do get over it. Well, and and part of like, just getting up. You just got to keep like, yeah. get in front of a microphone, get in front of people. And a lot of the... She's popular. <laughs> no big deal. A lot her of... roommate's uh, texting her pictures of rats right now. Don't worry. <laughs> Be jealous. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, how do you go? Oh, getting in front of a mic, yeah. Yeah, getting in front of a mic. And a lot of the writing that I do now is kind of just like improv on the spot. It's kind of like, oh, that worked, I'll keep it. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know. So when you say on the spot, you're like saying like at your open mics or like on stage, you're riffing yeah. and then you like, yeah. you hone it and you keep that. And it, that's a big trust thing. You got to trust yourself a lot because you're like, oh, I have this weird thought. I'm going to say it and see if everybody else thinks that it's funny as I do. Anyone? Anyone? No? <laughs> no? Thanks for that feedback. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So you're kind of taking the pressure out of the writing because you're using your improv training to do it in the moment. And I feel yeah, like... Well, fancy. No, but here's the thing. Like, here's the thing about stand-ups that, that people have different processes all the time and some people are always writing on their feet mm-hmm. and they're honing and they're honing. And like either they're recording and they're going back and they're honing. Sometimes people don't write. So that's yeah. a pressure that's stopping you there's a way around it. And if yeah. you're more comfortable, and that might not also be forever. Maybe you'll yeah. be less scary, scared and you'll, you know, not chisel. You'll just... Well, I think, <laughs> I think like life stuff, you know, if things happen in your life and you're like, I'm not feeling particularly funny right now. And I think, like we we're talking off camera, um, it's okay to not write funny stuff. Which yeah. Which is like... A, weird concept. Yeah, it is like that pressure of like, how am I going to make this funny? What's the angle? What's the angle? What's the premise? What's the premise? Sometimes you just got to write some real shit. Yeah. And you'll be surprised at how uh, sometimes writing the realness of it, you'll find something like organically mm-hmm. happens. It's funny. That sort of happened the other day. I was sitting out on the porch and I ended up writing a joke about a woodpecker. <laughs> Coming to a mic now. Wait, you were, you were on a porch? You are a seven lady. You're like, oh, a woodpecker. Where's my iced tea? <laughs> oh, my God. But I think it's great to talk about, like, uh, the challenges that you have and how you still yeah. push through, you know. Yeah. Because you're somebody who's relatively new to this yeah. world. And so grappling with the, like, you're... Like, I'm like a year it's crazy. Two months, it's crazy two because you're crushing it, this gal. It's like, whoa. Um... 
but the fact that you are having these these new challenges and like figuring out your process mm. while you're doing it because I think that's one of the huge things about stand up. It's not just like being on stage, but there's all this stuff that's happening off stage yeah. that you're having to figure out how you write, uh, when do you need time to like think, when do you when do you put yourself out there, when do you when you kind of like hone back in? All that yeah. stuff is part of it. It's yeah. real hard. It's real hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but I feel like uh, I feel like you're, you're crushing it. Um, can I ask you about because you're new ish, right, to the world? Best set, best set, oh. recent or whatever. When you were like, yeah. we were like, oh, this is the right decision. I'm like, I'm like crushing it right now. <laughs> I was in it. Oh, where was I? So, somewhere in West Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the Gilda Radner's Laugh Fest, and. It, I was expecting, fully expecting to just walk into this bar and it'd be like, you know, 20 people being like, all right, I'm ready for you. <laughs> um, and I walked in, it was like standing room only. There were like 200 people there. Dang. I like almost slash did a little bit, had this like, <gasps> everybody, everybody's here for, for me. This old girl? <laughs> um, <laughs> You're like, um, my people, I have arrived, right. Michigan. Yeah. Uh, no, but like, no one knew who I was. Cool. No one had seen me perform before. Double cool, because then it's like all new. It's yeah, like, yeah. fresh to death. Uh, so I went out there, and I just did my set that I had done 50,000 times before, but man. They loved it. Yeah. That's a great feeling. So especially because some, one of the things about stand-up is like it's it, there's always this unknown, right? So you go to a new town, new mm -hmm. state, new audience. You don't know you don't know how they're going to react. So there's that moment of like anything could happen. But yeah. you get on stage and you received so well. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Well, yeah. especially because like some sometimes the, some of the things that I say are very like you got to have the right audience for it sometimes. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you what do you mean by that? Got a big gay face. <laughs> That's what I mean. Um, and that's, yep, that was the term I was looking for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Um, so are you were you like a little? It's it a makes, new place. It makes me nervous. It makes you nervous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's either gonna go really well or not really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like you, she was talking about in her video the other day about self deprecation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reference. Yeah. Hello. Thanks for watching. You know what I'm gonna do? Info button right here. <laughs> Just, um. No, but like I feel like I I deliver my gayness in a way that's very um, approachable. I think approachable gayness. <laughs> yes. First book. <laughs> that's actually really good. I'll keep that. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like. Oh well, that's good. It's that. It's not. I'm sure the dedication page. <laughs> okay. Cool. You heard it here first. <laughs> um. So yeah, so, so that 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 feeling, and then just and really, I feel like I'm. You to some degree, like, I've done uh, gigs in, like, biker bars and things. You're like, oh, this is where I die. <laughs> you know? And what, then, what has been your best recent experience? Oh, gosh. You know, I'm dead inside now. <laughs> <laughs> they all feel the same. I'm such a robot. Um, I, I like when things are unexpected, right? So I like, I, I'm a gal who really loves audience work, right? And I just love, so good when that happens, I'm just like, yum, 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 yum. And, uh... I don't know, this doesn't even have anything to do with me, but we did a show at the Laugh Factory, and it was the Kate oh. show, and there was a gal up front, and I started talking to her, and she happened to be from the UK, and she was actually a stand-up, so I made her come on stage, yeah, you did. and I just love that kind of stuff, like, I like using stand-up comedy as, like, a community, yeah. which is a lot, which is not what stand-up comedy is to a lot of people, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm the smartest person in this room, you listen to me, you sit there, I'm on this elevated stage, I have all the power, now don't get me wrong, I like having all the power, but I like also... Uh, to, to, I like it to be inclusive. And so those moments when, like, weird things happen, yeah. uh, even within your set, I love those moments. Yeah. yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So, hey, new folks, I want to ask you if, you know, somebody either takes, like, a Kate's U class or you see somebody at your open mic, which is, uh, you joke like a girl until she changes the title. Um, what would you tell them? Like, someone who's maybe struggling or not sure they want to continue, what would you tell new folks to encourage oh. them? This sun, I'm so sorry. The sun is like hitting you on your head. We're very professional here. <laughs> it sort of makes it look even better. Oh, what are you, some <laughs> film noir character? Ooh. Uh, what would I tell new people? Yeah. Um, whew, as much as I, this advice is hard for me in any realm of my life, just do it. Like, yeah. you gotta find a safe space uh, to do it for your first time. <laughs> this is sounding like not talking about. <laughs> Being a stand-up, um, <laughs> it crosses many situations, yes. everyone. Yeah. Use protection. <laughs> uh, 
uh, consensual jokes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're very approachable. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, if you're a lady, come come to my show. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, the there's not much that you can talk about or can't talk about that someone's not going to laugh at you and not laugh at you and laugh with you. Yeah. Support uh, laughs. Support laughs. Oh, I was um, cupping it. It's weird. You do a lot of cupping. I do a lot of don't judge me. <laughs> support laughs. I'm wearing a sports bra. You can't really oh God, me too. cup. Oh, just bump. I can't bump. It's a weird bump. <laughs> so anyway, you say do it. Do it. Find, um, a, find your supportive spaces when you start. Mm-hmm. Uh, and talk, oh, talk to people. Like if you, if there's someone that you feel like, oh my gosh, I, I feel like they would have a lot of good knowledge or input or about something. There's been so many women who have reached out to me and I'm sure, obviously you, I reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of people that will help you, you know, suggest other open mics or, or suggest shows or so, something, you know, also watch a lot of comedy, go see shows, go watch people perform. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's take, great advice. Take classes. Like classes helped me a lot. It's just like structure Kate's you over here. Plug. <laughs> you don't have to keep plugging. Oh, it's my face that's blocking you from the sun. My Ooh. big old head. <laughs> okay. Those are all great. Like, do you think if you would redo it, right? If you would redo you at the beginning of the the first like months or year or whatever, whatever we're talking about, would you have done? What would you have done differently? Like, if you had a time machine, and of course the first thing you do is focus on your comedy career with a time machine. <laughs> Number one thing. What would you change anything, or would you? Hmm. Would you? Like, talk, you know, would you, what would you do? I would not be so hard on myself at first. Yeah. And I'm still so hard on myself. You know, it's, it's getting out of that mindset that everything that you write or everything that you say exists forever. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it does and it doesn't. And that can get real scary if you, you know, and uh, I would record myself more. I would record voice, voice memo at first. Uh, I would do that. Yeah. Um. What about you? No, that's a great one though. I think being forgiving in general, any it's not just stand up, but like I think this is like pretty universal for a lot of creative stuff. Is to just like have more fun. Yeah. Don't like you know don't don't like I know like especially a lot of students are like I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. Like it's a long con. Don't like comedy sure. is a long game. That's how I feel like I was when I when I first started classes. And I, I, I remember you may not remember this conversation, but I talked to you after class and you were like you're just like me, you want everything to like happen right now. It's like you like fast track, you you want to fast track it all and mm-hmm. it's you can't. It's, yeah. it's a long game. Long game. Long it really game. is. And it's one of those I mean, you know, there's it's like a muscle memory thing. You've gotta get used to being on stage, you gotta get used to that kind of feedback, yeah. you gotta get you it's a different world. Um and so being patient, that doesn't mean you can't be hungry. Because yeah. I think you're a gal who's hungry. I mean, you're not only you're doing your own shows, oh, <laughs> shut up. Self deprecation. <laughs> I love it. Um, but you know, it doesn't mean that you're not ambitious. Yeah. Because I love an ambitious gal. I love somebody who's like, what can I do next? Oh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. But that pressure of like, I'm not doing enough. I'm worthless. I'm not good enough. I'm not, all of a sudden it starts to Social spiral. Social media can eat you alive with that. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, you're doing all this stuff and I'm doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, is, that is a tricky thing. That comparison game is so tricky. So I think this, which is another thing about like I love with like your show. And there's a bunch of like uh, – like supportive rooms is like you you can reach out to a community yeah. and be like hey I'm struggling with stuff are you hey yeah. do you want to be writing do you want to like write we have to be writing partners forever but like do you want to like write like do you want to like hang out and write yeah. for a week um, making those writing groups or like I'm gonna go to this mic I'm gonna go to this show can I meet you there like well, yeah and and just like great it, finding someone to go with you is also helpful because there's people that I met during your class or during during um, when I first started going to open mics and all that that were still friends they'd say. It's been like a year. Yeah. So I hope you like <laughs> relationships forever. Comedy. Should I ask you anything else? I feel like this is the longest video we've ever done and I love it. I'm not editing it out. <gasps> Don't. <laughs> Don't. Know. Everyone's like, you know what? We've officially just did a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Speaking of which, you can see Elise on Empire. Oh. <laughs> I said it and I'm not cutting it out. <gasps> what? No secret. I, Stay tuned next week. No, what is it? Oh no, I was just gonna say that my grandmother. It was brought up over. My grandma doesn't know about my approachable gayness, and uh, will, she, will she be on my? Did she subscribe to my YouTube channel? No. 
She does you Facebook. jerk! She does have Facebook. Anyway, oh, so we, oh, the, fam- oh. the family was like, oh, that was really cool that you were in that. Your faces were great because I didn't have any lines. Just this great face. Because um, those eyebrows. I mean, give it to us a little. Oh, come on. My grandma goes, you know, I wouldn't make it a habit of hanging out with those people. And I, I think she thought that it was a reality show. Is what I think it was. Like, she thought that these people were actually doing the horrible things in life. And then I was, like, part of it. She's oh, like, don't man. Do she thought it was not a scripted show. Yes. It also, when you said it, at first I was like, that's a racist grandma. <laughs> oh, it was for sure also a racist grandma thing. I won't even tell you what she said before. Oh, God. We'll leave that Sorry, before. internet. <laughs> Stick it up there. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Way off. <laughs> We just found a thumbnail. All right, Elise, thanks for being on my oh, channel. So oh, this rascal. Make sure you go check her out. You joke like a girl. And, you know, everywhere. I mean, you're all over the place. So just find this dummy. <laughs> She's great. Should we buy out? Yeah. Ready? Here we go. Bye. Bye. We did it. We did it.